Hey everyone, welcome back to another video here on the channel. In this week's video, I'm going to be talking about one of my most favorite topics in all of RC, and that is dealing with speed. When it comes to our radio control vehicles, we all know that if we bump up the voltage of our system, we're going to have the potential to hit a higher top speed. However, one of the sort of issues that we can run into is falling into a trap. So I'm going to get into more details revealing and understanding what that so-called trap means and represents for us and then I'm going to close out the video by explaining ways that you can actually prevent yourself from falling into this trap. It doesn't matter if you fly a radio control airplane, drive a radio control car or boat, this is going to apply for all of radio controlled vehicles. You quickly realize that if you go from a two cell lithium polymer back on your radio control vehicle up to a three cell, your speed control will be happy and totally fine with that voltage and you realize that your brushless motor is going to be fine as well, operating at higher top speeds in terms of RPM for that specific motor. Then you wonder, is it as simple as just going from 2S to 3S, dropping in and you get that higher top speed? And that's where you land at this specific video. So to fully understand what happens is when we have a system, we go and jump up the voltage from that 2S to that 3S level, what happens to the current that we're going to draw? This is the most important part of everything that's going on. What will actually happen to the current that we're gonna pull in this system is it is going to go up. Considering that the battery pack is a bump from 2S to 3S, that's about a 50% increase. You would expect that the current is going to be possibly a 50% increase as well. And that's a substantial amount of power when you're looking at 50% more voltage, 50% more current. However, that's not necessarily true. You're gonna get a even bigger or even larger bump in terms of current. And this is the trap. Let's take a look at a little bit of data that I was able to capture with our brushless motor dyno. Here is our data set and a couple things I do wanna point out. We are going to be testing a two cell lithium polymer battery pack versus a three cell lithium polymer battery pack. Another thing is, is we are not actually changing the propeller. So literally the only thing that changes in our condition is the battery pack. Now we've tested a bunch of different parameters, voltage, current, the actual RPM, this is the speed right at the motor, as well as electrical power, and we even have mechanical power, as well as the motor efficiency, taking these two power values into the equation. So the big thing to focus on is of course our current value and the electrical power that we're going to be consuming. So our two cell lithium polymer battery pack, it was charged to a certain voltage, it was not fully charge at 4.2 volts per cell, the same thing with our 3S, and we get 7.64 volts out of it. The current that we end up seeing is 29 amps. With this, we get a total motor speed of 7,500 RPM, which gives us an electrical power of 222 watts. Now looking at the three cell lithium polymer battery pack, we get voltage of 10.86 with current of 53 amps. Our motor RPM jumps up to almost 10K, but we get 572 watts out of this system. This is a massive jump in power and you can see that the percentage difference here is 157% more power we are getting out of our 3S scenario versus our 2S scenario. But the big thing that we're interested in is we are going up by 50% from a three cell lithium polymer battery pack to a two cell lithium polymer battery pack. The actual percentage difference from voltage in reality ends up being 42% because our 3S cannot actually maintain and hold the voltage because it's being pulled at 53 amps of power. So we get more voltage sag. That's the important note I'm trying to make here. As compared to the same size battery, this is probably a 2200 milliamp hour pack, only pulling 29 volts, it can maintain more than the nominal voltage. But here we are lower than the nominal voltage. This is why we get a percentage difference of less than that 50%. The big thing to notice about current is we are going up by 81%. This is quite significant. If your speed control cannot handle this amount of power, then you're going to get yourself into trouble. 
all of this comes at a small incremental increase of 30% for our RPM. There you have it. We get a significant bump in not only voltage, because that's what we're actually applying as a difference within our system, but current as well. That 80 plus percent difference in current is going to mean a lot for us. Now there's two things that kind of come into the picture for us. The first one is, how do we know and prevent anything from going wrong if we do want to go and increase the voltage of our system? The question then becomes, what kind of current should we expect within our system if we're going to jump up in a certain voltage increment? Well, the easiest way to do this is to take the new cell count divided by the old cell count, and then once you have that value, you want to raise it to the exponent 1.6. So if you raise it to the exponent 1.6, this is going to give you a multiplier of the amount of current that you would now have as a result of increasing the voltage from one level to another. Now this is the amount of current that you should expect to draw from your speed control and you will want to make sure that you are going to be within the limitations of your speed control at this value. Keep in mind this is a complete approximation However, this formula does work quite well. Another thing that you want to consider is the temperature of your speed control. Before the modification or jump in voltage, you wanna make certain that your speed control is operating at a good temperature, at a nice cool temperature, because when you step up to a higher voltage, you know that you're gonna get a bump, a significant bump, in current values. And this is going to also increase the overall temperature of your speed control. And you want to make sure that you're always under that maximum threshold in terms of temperature for that speed control. Temperature is definitely something that will give you a very good indication as to how well that speed control is performing, regardless of what current values are put on the sticker on that speed control. In addition to this, I would highly recommend doing this as well, and that is to decrease the amount of load of your system, regardless, again, if you fly a plane or if you're driving a radio control car, this applies to both. Decreasing the load is actually going to be like gearing down your system so that your motor will not have to put out as much torque. You can gain torque by taking and removing some motor speed and converting that into torque gained by gearing or even propeller pitch or diameter. So to do this in a radio control car, for example, you're going to decrease the amount of gearing that you have, and this can be done by means of reducing the pinion gear size that you are using on your radio control car. Or even better, if you can also increase the total tooth count of your spur gear. Doing both of these will change your gearing and allow you to reduce the amount of load, decreasing the amount of current that you're going to pull with that system. If you fly a plane, it's gonna be the same thing. Instead of gears, you're gonna be working with the diameter of your propeller and the pitch of your propeller. Decreasing those when you go to a higher cell count is going to help reduce the amount of current that you are going to consume with that system. Utilizing all of these methods is what's going to give you the highest chance for success so that you can hit a higher top speed in time. It may not be right away because you change the gearing, but as you gain more confidence in the system and know that that system is reliable and all your temperatures are in check, then you can start to increase the tooth count and get back up to a higher top speed should everything be okay. Well guys, I hope that gives you a good idea as to the trap that can exist if you go and bump the voltage up in your particular radio control vehicle. As always, like the video if you do. Don't forget to hit that sub button so that I can see you in that next video. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next one.